Okay, we back with NFL Draft Spotlight. Once again, we're talking about University of Texas, uh, San Antonio defensive end, 6'6 monster defensive end, Marcus Davenport, and is a fast, twitchy athlete, recorded a 4'6 and a 4'5'9 at the NFL Draft Compound, 22 bench presses at 225, so strength, you know, maybe a little bit of improvement. And, um, you know, somebody asked me to do this on him. I wasn't even aware of him. I, I, I wasn't able to really get entrenched into the draft so far like I want to uh, because of my work schedule. Uh, but, you know, I've seen this guy, man. This guy is a beast, you know, just watching some of the highlights and watching some of the raw film that just don't show the highlights and some of the weaknesses. And one, obviously one weakness that people are already pointing out for him is obviously he comes from Conference USA in the competition level. You know, you know, you had a lot of, you know, smaller schools or or kind of not big, uh, big schools produce good pass rushers. Robert Mathis, uh, you know, was from a smaller school, I believe a historically black college. Dwight Freeney was from Syracuse. The Giancia was from Brigham Young, BYU University. Um, Julius Peppers from North Carolina. They wasn't known for as a, in a as a uh, football powerhouse. You can go on and on, you know. Um, pass rushers could be found. They like guards in in, in uh, NCAA going to the NBA. When the NCAA tournaments start, you know, it's a guard-driven tournament. And you see all these uh, guards from these smaller schools just taking over because you can, you can find great guard play anywhere. You know, same thing for the NFL. You can find great pass rushing anywhere. Sometimes, you know, a lot of guys don't succeed in college because of the system. In the NFL, coaching is a little bit better. Sometimes, and they coach them up, and they put them in a better position to succeed. And some guys just take off and hit the ground running. You know, uh, we talked about a few pass rushers already, and Marcus Davenport may be end up being the star of this draft. Um, six six with two sixty, run a four five four six. I mean, shoot, you know, you put him next to Ziggy, they both agree, genetically damn near the same. Davenport is is a little bit more explosive. Obviously, Ziggy probably going to be stronger this, at this point in his career because he's a little bit older, bone density. He's been in the league getting his weight up. And you give him, you know, Ziggy Ansah, another monster on the side of him with Ansa, well, not with Ansa, but Alshon Robinson, Sylvester Williams, and you can get a Maurice Horse in the, in the third round. In the second round, I mean, you just upgraded your defensive line big time. And that's what the Lions do. That's their number one weakness, you know, well, you know, it's amongst their defense. They number one weak, weakness when their offense is running. If it comes down to Darius Geis um, or Marcus Davenport, at this point, I got to get the pass rusher. You know, because I know how deep this draft is in, in running backs, and I know how superficial this draft is when it comes to pure, you know, pass rushers. And, you know, if you can mold Davenport like you did Ziggy Ansah, and you could just build them up and they can book in together, that's going to be nasty. You get your Maurice Hurst in the middle in the second round. You get your running back, third, fourth, Chubbs, you know, Sonny Michelle, you know, Royce from Oregon, Rashad Penny. I mean, shit. I'm just telling you guys, excuse my language, how deep this draft is at running back. Defensive end, it's a lot of edge rushers, you know. It's a lot of edge rushers. You know, tall, linky guys, you know, that can set the edge or convert speed into power and be situational pass rushers. Can drop a little bit more three, four, you know, type of pass rushers. Ain't too many defensive ends, man, like him. He also can. They also suspect that he could be a three, four end with his athletic, uh, a three, four, yeah, defensive end with his athletic uh, ability and drop, you know, at some point. But with the Lions, he, you never know. You know, we don't know what they're gonna run three, four, four, three, a hybrid, and he fits the mold again of a guy that can probably stand up and put his hand in the dirt and get after it. And when he come off the edge, it's, it's, some, it's something of beauty. Especially when he started learning counters and, and other defensive moves and get his hand placement, get his pad level at the right, uh, right at the right, uh, at the right height and all that stuff and get that NFL coaching. They're going to build him up like Zeke. It's just, if he's going to be healthy, get stronger and, uh, you know, just get the experience. If the Lions are able to get him, I think this is the still of the draft at 20. I absolutely do think that. Um, to get a pass rusher of this size and this and this speed that's comparable to Clowney and Ansa, both will win inside the top five, you get a steal here. Absolute steal.
And it can happen because you have so many quarterbacks that really aren't first-round quarterbacks. There's no real first-round quarterback this year, but it's a demand for the quarterback. Rosen, Mayfield, you know, uh, Allen, you know, Sam, Sam Darnold, you know, uh, you know, uh, Lamar Jackson, you know, about five or six quarterbacks gonna take up the first round. Then you got Bradley Chubbs, you got Raycon Smith, you got the the the, the uh, safety from Florida State. Um, Vita Via from 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 Washington. You, the running back Saquon Barkley. So anything is possible, man. And if he get fall to us, I'm snatching him. He my favorite prospect so far that I've uncovered. You know, other than um, if I did Saquon Barkley, I don't think I I think I did a video, but I didn't do an NFL draft spot on him. But go check out Marcus Davenport and his highlight video on his raw film. It's a thing of beauty. We gone.